recording. All right, uh, I just wanna welcome everyone into this conversation uh, that I'm having today with Chris Morris. Uh, me and Chris are two conservatives that we want to develop solutions for America, not only America, black America, and even here locally. And so we're gonna be talking about or uh, coming through the vein of education. And I want you to really pay attention to what Chris is saying because Chris is a former teacher. He's been with kids. He knows the system. He knows um, what kids need. And so we're basically going to be in the vein of, are we really doing the loving thing right. um, for children? And so I'll let Chris introduce himself and then we'll just kind of get into the conversation. Yeah, thanks for having me on here, uh, Patrick. So yeah, as uh, Patrick was saying, I, you know, I've been a teacher, I was a math teacher for about seven, eight years uh, here in Hamilton County. Uh, where we both reside and um, you know I definitely have had my experiences knowing the difficulties of navigating the public educational system mm -hmm. not only from the bureaucratic side you know if you will but definitely the challenges of connecting with the kids who have very real needs that the system really isn't designed to address wow. so um, anyway so now I've stepped out since then I work as a consultant um, I have a process I believe the Lord gave me when I was in the classroom that was really working well with connecting with kids from inner city or maybe tough backgrounds mm -hmm. uh, that motivated them. I once heard someone put it this way. He said, you know, right now it's in a lot of our schools, especially our inner city schools, mm -hmm. it's like the kids are suffocating, mm -hmm. you know, and wow. we keep trying to give them a new test policy, uh, hire a new, you know, lead numeracy coach when the kids just need air. Wow. You know, let, let, let's kind of pause right there when you were talking about testing. Right. How does because the average listener, they don't understand, you know, what goes on in everyday school and what <laughs> what not. what you know the state is looking for. Right. What is the testing culture? Because I hear a lot of teachers yeah. talk about that. What is going on with that? In, in a word, I'm just going to say it's toxic. Wow. It's just it's just toxic. You know, we talk about what's the loving thing to to do or to come, you know, from the vein of what's the loving thing to do. Mm -hmm. This is not loving. What currently have as just status quo in in the whole country let alone our state and in our city wow um testing is i mean if you ask a teacher it's not loving by them um mm -hmm. you're you feel like a you know a rodent on a hamster wheel um for for starters you know i would like to back up and mm -hmm. ask you know what's the point of testing and mm -hmm. i'm going to use a different word what's the point of assessment okay assessment you know in my humble opinion yeah. the whole point of assessment is to see whether or not learning has taken place that's the whole point of assessment. It's also to find out what or who a, a person is. Mm -hmm. You know, what their strengths are. You're assessing, A, have you learned algebra two? Mm -hmm. have, you, have you determined that perhaps you don't need to pursue a career that makes you need to learn algebra two? You know what I mean? Right. It's a, it, it should be informative for the teacher because our job is to draw out who a kid is mm -hmm. so we can communicate to a kid who they, they are, are, what their real value is, and how they can go out and add value to society. That's what brings income. That's what opens up doors and opportunity for kids. Wow. The system is not set up that way at all. Wow, because I mean, everywhere I go, I hear teachers, and it may be some teachers that's watching this right now. I hear teachers talk about testing. Right. Um, but I, re I can remember a time where I didn't understand. I was like, what is wrong with taking a test? Why can't kids just take a test. What is that? But you're making a point and saying it's really not just testing, it's all of the assessing right. that the system is doing. And so what is the purpose of it? What 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 is the state saying they need assessments for? Well, for example, I like to go back, you know, through the vein of love, all right? What's the loving thing to do? Yeah. Well, like for me, when I read my Bible, you know, we're both men of faith. Yeah. You know, we talk about how love keeps no record of wrongs, right? Mm -hmm. You know, if you think about how that applies to just the real world, Wow. Most people who go to a lawyer, who go to their doctor, you know, they don't care if you failed the first time you took the bar exam, for example. They yeah. want to know, did you pass the bar exam? At mm -hmm. some point, have you done it enough times? Have you made mistakes and learned from it? Have you gotten to a point of competency where you have demonstrated that you learned something? Mm -hmm. Therefore, you are competent to do the job. I don't want to go to a doctor, let's say my <laughs> wife's pregnant, uh -huh. okay, and we're delivering our first baby girl, for example, and I don't want to hear the doctor say, well, you know, I got an A the first time I took my, you know, my, my board exam and I've delivered one baby. Wow. I actually feel way more comfortable 
you know, when she says, you know what, I didn't pass it the first time, but I have now, and I've delivered 600, you know, babies, healthy, beautiful girls, and, you know, I know what I'm doing, and, you yeah. know, that's more comforting to me. That's what makes me feel like, uh, you know, you're competent to do your job, and it's going to make you employable. Wow. And so, that's really neat how you compared that with the scripture and where it talks about love. Right. And I think... And that's what I think what makes Chris so unique because I don't think that any our school system has ever approached um, education from the standpoint of love right. and doing the loving thing to children. And so kind of expound on that. And okay. what made you, where did that come from? Where did you get that concept from of what's the loving thing to do? Right. It's a great question. I mean, obviously, my first answer is going to be Jesus Christ. You know, mm -hmm. I really believe he... He worked with me. He was patient with me. I really was not a good educator at all <laughs> for three years. I was really bad. How selfish I was. I was trying to get my paycheck, get through the day because the kids were wearing me out. Okay, hold on. You Let's know? stop right there. Okay. So you mean to tell me okay, there sorry. are teachers that actually you just know, do that? There could be some. I'm not saying yeah. names. Not I'm all. Not saying not all. Yeah. A lot of good ones, you know, yeah. who have a heart for it. I didn't start out really with the great motivation at, wow. at first. You know, that was me, you know. You're the first teacher that I've heard ever admit that. Oh, really? Like, seriously. <laughs> like, I hear, I and I've been in education. That's so funny. I've been in the lounge. Yeah. And you can see the lazy teacher and the yeah. teacher that's sweating, yeah. you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. So teachers know the good teachers and right. the ones that are kind of lax. But I've never heard a teacher say, I wasn't doing, I wasn't giving it my all. I really wasn't, so, you know, I mean, I mean, if you're really going to walk out the, by faith, you got to be honest. Mm -hmm. That comes with humility. So I really wasn't, you know, the Lord knocked on my heart one day and he pointed out and just said, you're the problem. Wow. <laughs> and I was complaining and, and eventually I, I heard him, you know, and I said, mm -hmm. all right, I need to repent, you know, mm -hmm. that's what it says in my Bible. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I needed to put, for me, it looked like I said, I'm going to do an hour and a half of lesson planning every single lesson I did for two weeks. I gave mm -hmm. myself a time. And I said, this is where I'm going to start. And it's amazing when I start somewhere, when I showed the Lord that I could be faithful with little, you know, mm -hmm. two week, you know, he gave me the ability to do it for years. Wow. But I had to start from that place. So I started to slowly realize when I put more of myself and concentrated on the kids first. Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in people come first. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this might not be politically correct, but, you know, there were times when my principal, my administrator told me, hey, I know the kids just finished an exam on Wednesday and we've got to, because the district was telling us we got to have these mini tests in, you need to give them another test on Friday. Mm. I mean, the kids just busted their tail to get through this very hard unit. And you expect me to teach a whole nother unit in 48 hours mm -hmm. and test them again? It's not a loving thing to do. Mm -hmm. And I remember starting to tell the kids that's what it was, right? Mm -hmm. The kids were checking out and going, you gotta be kidding me. And I really felt like if the Lord told me, he goes, do the loving thing. Mm -hmm. So I ignored my principal. I said, hey, we're gonna push it back another week and a half. Let's just redo this lesson. And I decided if we get in trouble, I'm the one that's gonna get in trouble. Mm -hmm. And guess what? I didn't get in trouble. Uh -huh. I got an influence with the kids. I started doing the loving thing and just learning how to make that a principle and a guiding way of doing things. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. And so your process was doing the loving thing by kids. Now, how did that pan out with your administrator yeah like <laughs> you know i mean because i mean it's easy to say you know yeah. do, you know let's do the loving thing right. but you know you do have a job you do have right. you know responsibilities how was their reaction to what you were doing in the classroom what did how did they react yeah that's a great question i mean like first and foremost going back to what's the loving thing to do we're talking about the system i know you and i have spoken yeah. in the past about how we think the whole system's broken and needs to yeah. be fixed so for me, right now, just like with a country, mm -hmm. you don't like, you know, we don't like dictatorships. Right. You know, we don't want kings. Right. We want elected officials who have a limited power. Yeah. And unfortunately, in, in schools, it's been this way forever, the principal is the dictator. The principal mm -hmm. in that school setting has unlimited power, and that's a problem that's not loving. Mm -hmm. We also have um, a high turnover rate with administrators. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the way it's, the payment's structured, you're incentivized to not stay in your job very long and to take a new promotion in order to get paid. And so this just in and of itself is not loving. Right. It makes teachers get low morale. It affects how they teach the kids. Kids have low morale. And you also don't feel like you can ever head in any one direction very mm -hmm. long before someone new sultan comes in. And take, it's like a country 
who's been taken over by another kingdom every two years. Wow. And now the Prince of Persia is my sultan and you know right. my king. And another war happened and now there's a new king. You know, right. it, it, get, it wears you out a little yeah. bit. You know, and that's the culture that we have too often in our school districts. Yeah. And if you think about it, just really think about that because here in you know, in our county and in our state, you know, teach our principals move like every three years. And, and if you think about, we, there's so much data out there that shows, you know, when a kid is moving around like that, or, or if a kid has, you know, a different set of parents, right. you know, every two or three years, no imagine how unstable and inconsistent that it will be for that kid. And so no wonder we have, you know, two thirds of our kids not being able to read right. on grade level. Right. It's because there are so many different people coming in and out with different you know, a whole um, new agenda, yeah. a whole different plan, a different curriculum. You know, yeah. now that I work as a consultant, for example, I see it in a totally different light because I have a plan, a program that I have to work with the decision maker to implement for the school. Well, mm -hmm. I might have a principal who likes and hears my vision and they hire us to come in and do our program. Well, oh, three months, one time, two months after I got in the door, they got moved and mm -hmm. they put in a new principal who had no idea who I was, didn't mm -hmm. have those prior conversations, didn't have a clue what the plan was, so they didn't right. have time to fool with me. And so a product that I had that was really gonna help kids and teachers connect got to the wayside and thousands of dollars were wasted because wow. frankly, they didn't lovingly handle how they do administration and hiring. Wow. So let's kind of shift here to what are some of the things that we can do to show love um, to our students, to right. our teachers, right. what can we do? And I've heard, I've read your book, uh, mm -hmm. Class Act, by the way, he has a book called Class Act, and it talks about transactions of care. And I think this is so key. Yeah. Can you kind of explain what that looks like and how our school systems can become more loving? Right, so that's a great place to start. I mean, policy obviously is a very, you know, uphill battle, but right. something that any teacher can start to do or anyone best in education, I had this uh, term come to me when I was really thinking about what I was doing and the loving thing. I call it a personal transaction of care. Mm. And so, you know, you think about banking, you think about, hey, I can be the richest man in the world. Or let's say I just, maybe not the richest man in the world, yeah. but I'm rich, I got a million dollars, <laughs> yeah. you know, with bb and <laughs> in the bank. I, and I'm, I'm living good, I'm good. And I go down to SunTrust and I need to withdraw some cash because I want to go down to the flea market or something with my family. And I walk into SunTrust and I say, hey, can I withdraw a hundred bucks, please? Mm -hmm. And they say, well, sir, you, you can't do that. I'm like, what do you mean, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm a millionaire, I got a million dollars in the bank, you know? Well, give me my money, I need a hundred dollars cash, you know? The, they're gonna say, and look at you, and they're gonna say, sir, you can't expect to make a withdrawal from an account in which you haven't first made a deposit. Wow. He hasn't made that deposit say, in that, say I'll, that I'll again. say it again. Yeah. You can't expect to make a withdrawal from an account in which you haven't first made a deposit. It doesn't matter how much you have. You haven't taken any money and put it and poured it into this institution. You can't withdraw anything else out. Mm -hmm. And what I found with people, when you, we pour something into them, what does that look like? Mm -hmm. It might be show up to this kid's basketball game because mm -hmm. his parents aren't ever showing up. And, and that shows a personal transaction of care. This mm -hmm. guy, relationally speaking, cares for me. Mm -hmm. So the next time I ask him to do something, turn in your work, you know, don't hit that kid in the back of that. You know yeah. what I mean? He's going to want to please me because of his relationship he feels he has with me. Wow. Because, you know, just like when you deposit money in an account, generally speaking, if you're wise, you're mm -hmm. going to withdraw it not only what you put in, but with interest. Wow. And what I found mm -hmm. is when I started doing these personal transactions of care, and uh, I had a very specific way I would do it, um, I always got way more back than I ever put into the kid from my perspective. Mm. And uh, it was helping with discipline issues, it was helping with grades, it was helping with suicide even. Mm. People were coming to me and saying, if you didn't do that, Mr. Morris, I just want you to know I was gonna kill myself tonight. Mm. You know, And now I can tell the counselors, You know, right. now everyone knew to look for that, it's saving lives. Right. And to me, um, it's a great place to start. Wow. It's a loving thing that you can do, because love is proactive, mm. it's not reactive. We don't just wait for things to go bad because you're not in tune with what's really going on with the person individually. Right. You're proactively engaging this person. You're mm. making sure you're tending to their souls and not just their minds. It's amazing the connection there because in our American culture, when we look at the word love, most of the times we, we just think about it being a feeling or right. 
how someone makes me feel. But like he said, the truth of the matter is that love is action. Yes. It's actually a choice. And, you know, I just think about, you know, myself and my wife. You know, there are some days where I may not feel like loving my wife. Like every day? Yeah. <laughs> every morning? Yeah, you don't feel like it. It's not a feeling that you have. But yeah. I have to actively make a choice right. to love her in spite of the circumstance in spite of what's going on and so we have children entering buildings where there is no transaction of care nope. where the teacher's really only thinking about oh i gotta take this do this assessment today or right. you know i have to do this after work cool. and so and can i just yeah. add the teacher this is a big trap that i see many teachers even those i talk to about this they look at the they make the mistake of looking at the class as a group mm. I don't see David and I know that he likes baseball and that he has one father at home, and, you know, and no mother. I don't look at Susie. They look at it just like a group of people in a crowd. And so when that's happening, there's no personal transaction of care because mm -hmm. you don't personally know anybody. Yeah. And it makes a huge difference in the, I don't know, the culture. Yeah. That and that, yeah. And when you, and just think about that, when you know what a kid is going through, right. um, it makes that transaction a little bit more easier and so we want to continue this conversation about love and we, we may do like a four-part series with yeah. this and talking about how we can be more loving to children in our education in our education system right. um, Chris uh, has a movement that uh, he started and I Join want you us. all to to <laughs> I want him to kind of introduce right that to you Can I put it on yeah all right don't be offended all right this says mega all right, it doesn't say something that you might be thinking. Yeah. Don't turn off the speaker, right? This is make education, and I put this on here, make education great again. And so um, just like uh, Patrick, if you check us out on Facebook and on YouTube, but on Facebook, if you look up Chris W. Morris, that's mm -hmm. gonna be the platform where we're gonna break down, you know, I started doing this thing called Love Facts. Okay. And I wanna just, my, my, my heart behind that is, let's literally, specifically, talk about what love looks like. Wow. And it's going to look like lots of different things. Like I might say something like, hey, don't confuse nice with love. There's a difference. Love uh -huh. facts. You know, okay. we might put up some of our videos and our discussions uh, on that platform. But I want us to start unpacking a real glimpse of what love looks like. Okay. That's Who Jesus two. is, you know, mm -hmm. so that when you wreck, so that when you see the authentic version of what love is, you will always sniff out the counterfeit. Mm. You'll know what it doesn't look like, and right. then you know what not to do. So that's kind of the direction there. Oh, wow. See, aren't you going to love this? <laughs> we are about solutions, okay? Yes. We've been, he was involved with the problem for a long time. I was immersed in the problem for a long time. Now it's time to develop and come up with solutions. Absolutely. So I'm excited about uh, this series that we're going to be doing. So be looking for part two next week where we talk about what love actually looks like. Right. Thank you for joining us. All right. Peace. Thanks for having me. All right. All right. Boom. What do you think? Yes. Uh, you make it easy.